today's review video, we're checking out the brand new 50mm 1.6x full frame anamorphic lens from C-Ray. Hey everyone, my name is Drew Hitt and I'm a cinematographer from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Affordable full frame anamorphic is finally here. In this hyper review video, we're going to do a deep dive into the lens features, build quality, anamorphic characteristics, bokeh, flares, and check out some of the footage shot with this lens so you can see for yourself. Let's get into it. I've been really excited to test this lens on a bunch of commercial shoots paired with the red Komodo, and my final verdict can be summarized in one word, wow. I'm also super excited to announce that this lens is going to be part of an entire lineup of T2.9 anamorphic full frame lenses from Cire. They will be releasing a 35mm, a 75mm, and a 100mm lens. Lens features. This lens features a 1.6x squeeze factor and I shot this entire video in 3x2 6K anamorphic mode on the red Komodo and that produces a 241 aspect ratio, which I prefer. When the sensor is set at 16x9 and you de-squeeze the image, you'll end up with a much wider 281 aspect ratio. 2771 is the projection aspect ratio for Cinerama as a reference. The lens also features a maximum aperture of T2.9, and although that may seem slow, you can shoot wide open on this lens with it still maintaining a good level of sharpness. All of the footage in this video was shot wide open at T2.9. The minimum focus distance is 2.5 feet. The lens comes in RF mount for Canon and RED Komodo, L mount for Panasonic and Sigma, E mount for Sony, and Z mount for Nikon cameras. Anamorphic Characteristics I was lucky enough to use this lens on a series of commercial video shoots and you can see for yourself the type of image and feeling that this lens creates. It's not clinically over sharp like photo lenses and has the true anamorphic feel to it. What I really like about this lens is that it produces an almost vintage look without the vintage softness. In this example, we're looking at a fitness spot that I filmed and you can see a nice soft object separation between the talent and the trees. I shot the close-ups at the minimum focus distance of 2.5 feet. In this shot of the grass, you can see how narrow the field of focus can be when wide open using ND filters. Now moving on to everyone's favorite, bokeh. The bokeh on this lens is what separates it from its spherical counterparts. It creates a pleasing stretched oval bokeh which results in clean object separation when shooting wide open. The bokeh has soft edges and is noticeably more narrow than 1.3 times anamorphic lenses. There's a certain characteristic to anamorphic lenses, and a lot of it comes down to that signature bokeh our eyes are looking for, and these lenses do a great job of producing that look. With a 1.6x squeeze factor, this lens falls in this sweet spot between 1.3 and 2 times, and creates a pleasing stretched oval bokeh without being so stretched and warped that it becomes jarring and distracting like it can be with 2 times lenses. I feel like this is a nice compromise for the price tag. When you shoot on these lenses, you just know that it's anamorphic and you can tell the difference. It's all up to you as the creator to decide what look and feel you're going for when shooting anamorphic. Here's some more nighttime bokeh tests. I did a few rack focuses where you can see the minimal focus breathing. You can see mild distortion to the bokeh towards the very edges of the frame, but they maintain that same oval stretch. Moving on to the lens flares. The flares on this lens are unique to this new 1.6x set and are softer and offer a different look than the C-Ray 1.3 versions. Hard light sources flare across the entire image, like in this example of the Audi headlights or in this shot of cars driving past at nighttime. And even sunlight appears to flare blue with secondary teal flares. Controlling the flares is easy once you become more comfortable using these lenses and the light streaks can be flagged off with a matte box or side flags. The flare shape changes based off your light source, so in this example the LED light is creating horizontal square shape flares, whereas in this example a one point light source creates a series of light streaks with multiple secondary flares and unique elements. With this Audi headlight shot you can see various light streaks fanning off to the far right of the frame with several different smaller shapes and the primary flares streak across the entire frame. In this example, the lens flares actually turned into stretched oval shapes which I found really interesting and unique, so this lens has a lot of character depending on how far you push it. Build Quality This lens is built like a tank and comes in at 2.3 pounds, which is quite light for a full frame anamorphic lens and is to be expected with higher quality glass. The entire barrel is made of aluminum alloy and it features standard .8 pitch gears for manual and remote follow focus systems, and the focus pulls are very smooth with a nice minimal drag. It offers a 95 degree focus throw, which is also a huge advantage when using the lens handheld and doing quick rack focus shots. The aperture is also geared and is much more stiff to prevent accidentally bumping it and changing stops when filming. 
Siri did a great job of including both an imperial and metric set of markings in both meters and feet, and the markings are easy to read. The front glass lens structure has 16 elements in 13 groups and offers an 82mm front filter thread. The super early bird price for this lens is $1199 US and it's now available on Indiegogo. I'd like to give a huge thanks to my friends at Gearhouse Windsor for providing the camera rentals and gear support. I hope you guys really enjoyed my detailed review video of this epic anamorphic lens. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you with your buying decisions, give this video a like and follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes of how I do what I do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.